So in this video, we have bacteria is being grown in a Petri dish and it's observed over a period of four hours. So here we have a table of those results, uh, monitoring the bacteria population after each hour, and it's starting with 100 uh, in the Petri dish at time zero. Plot the data on a graph. So here are my axes. We have time on the horizontal, population on the vertical. So we're going to start off with, at time zero, we're at 100. So 100 would be here. And then after one hour, we're at 200. So that would be there. Then after two hours, we would be at 400. So that would be there. After three hours, we're at 800, which would be there. And then after four hours, we were at 1,600, which is up here. So this is the shape of my graph. And now I need to draw a curve that goes through it. OK, and so this is an exponential curve. This is exponential growth. OK, uh, the reason why I know it's exponential growth is because the population is doubling every time, every time interval. So what it's asking me to do here is estimate the population of the bacteria when T is 2.5 hours. So I need to go from 2.5 so roughly there. So I need to go up to my curve. And then along here. OK. So it's somewhere between 500 and 600. It's closer to 600 than 500. So it's probably something um, around about 560, 570, something like that. So we'll, I'll go with 560, just to go kind of see how close we're going to be. Part C, suggest an equation for the curve passing through the data points in the form P equals AB to the T. Now, ordinarily, doing this is actually quite challenging if you've just got uh, some data points. So there are two unknowns to find, the A and the B. Um, and that leads on to a topic called reduction to linear form, which is something that is met at A-level maths. So... In order to do it in this scenario, well, the data is nice enough that we can kind of see what's going on. The fact that the data is doubling every time interval, every one hour, means that the B has to be 2. OK, so the B has got to be 2 because we're doubling. So it's going to start off with 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, then 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, etc. The A is the multiplier. Now, ordinarily, if you just had 2 to the power of t or 2 to the power of x, it would be going through 1 uh, at, on the y-axis. But we're going through 100. So it's been multiplied by 100 to stretch it upwards. So that means that the A must be 100. So P equals 100 times 2 to the power of t. So actually, now that I've got my equation, I could work out what P is when T was 2.5. So when T is 2.5, P will be 100 times 2 to the 2.5. So we'll put that into the calculator and see what we get. So 100 times 2 to the power of 2.5, and that's 500... And 65.685, etc. Now you'll remember, remember uh, we put 560 here, but I was umming and umming between 560 and 570. So actually, my graph wasn't actually too bad um, with being able to estimate that. So that's how we can get the exact equation and then use that. But as I said, in general, um, finding that equation can be quite tough. Um, so if you were asked to find it, the values would have to be nice 
um, in order for you to be able to work out the value of A and B.